In this video, we are going to look at something called the difference of cubes. Now, this is a new concept for grade 10. So you might be a grade 11 who is busy revising grade 10 work right now. That's fantastic. Or you might be a grade 10 and this is new for you. So let's have a look. It's very easy, but it is something new. So let's practice it a bit. But first, let's recap difference of squares. So in, in, in previous years, so in grade 9, you would have been introduced to something called difference of squares. And we've looked at a few of those now in grade 10 as well. So with difference of squares, you typically need, you, well, yeah, you need two terms and you need to have them separated with a minus and each term has to be a perfect square. So for example, x times x gives you x squared and 2 times 2 gives you 4. Those are called squares because with a square, it's a two-dimensional shape and so you say, for example, 2 times 2 and that gives you 4. In this technique, we are doing something called the difference of cubes. Now a cube is three-dimensional. You've got a width, you've got depth, and you've got height. So how many things is that? That's three, so we call it three-dimensional. So with cubes, you're gonna have to be multiplying something together three times. So the qualifying criteria for difference of cubes will be two terms, it can be a plus or a minus, and each term has to be a perfect cube. So a cube is when you can multiply together three times. So can you think of anything that can multiply together three times to give you x3? Yes, x times x times x. That gives you x cubed. What about this one? 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 and so we have what we need. So what you then do is you open up a bigger bracket or two big brackets like that and you take this answer over here because x times x times x gives us x cubed and you take this number over here and you put that there. Then the sign that is in between these two which is the plus will also be put over here. Next the first number that's going to go over here will be x squared. Why did I do that? Because you want these two to be able to give you this term over here. What we now do is we flip this sign over, so it's now a negative. We then multiply the two that I've just highlighted in turquoise, the x and the one, and that's just going to give us one x. And then what you do is you take this last term over here and you square it. What that means, remember a square is a shape like that, so you multiply the 1 and the 1 together and that's going to give you 1. And that's it. Moving on to number 2. So does this qualify for perfect or difference of cubes? Sorry, We have two terms, so that works. Are there, is there a plus or a minus in between? Yes. And is each one a perfect cube? Well, the first one is yes because we know that x times x times x is x cubed. What about 125? Well, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And so both of them are perfect cubes. So what we do is we open up our two brackets. The perfect cube of x3, or the cube of x3 goes here. The cube of 125 goes here. Those two signs will have to be the same. This will be x squared, because x and x squared gives us x to the power of 3. We then flip this sign over, or this sign, it doesn't really matter, and you make it a plus, and you then multiply these two terms together. And then the last step is to take that term and square it, so you multiply it together, and minus 5 times minus 5 is positive 25. So, does this qualify for difference of cubes? Well, yes, it's got two terms separated with a plus and a minus, and what times what times what gives us this? Well, that's just going to be y times y times y, and that gives us y cubed. And this one over here, well, that's x times x times x, and that gives us x cubed. So we can do difference of cubes. We can open up the brackets. We put the cube of the first one, or the, the, yeah, the cube, which is y, and the cube, of, or the cube root of x cubed, which is x. This sign over here will be placed over there. We'll put a y squared over here because y times y squared gives us y to the power of 3. We then flip the sign over. 
we multiply these two together, which is just x, y. And then what we do is we square this number. So we say x times x, well, that's x squared.